What's up guys, welcome to today's video. Uh, we got a little bit of tandem action going on, not really drifting, but Johan's going to be pulling the engine on the white chaser today. We did end up going through with taking that out so we can put that in the brown car. While that's going on, I wanna to try to get a little bit more done on the R34. So I'm gonna start laying out my uh, kind of an arrangement of arms and everything and figure out what's missing, what I need powder coated, what I'm going to get vapor honed so that way I can get all that stuff sorted and get the front subframe put back together. So once I get the engine back, that's one thing that I don't have to worry about. So um, I'm gonna start doing that now. Before we get into anything else, I wanna give you guys a quick reminder to check out Off The Record. If you don't remember what Off The Record is, it's an app for iOS and Android that's also available online that helps you contest and fight traffic tickets and misdemeanors. When you book a case with Off The Record, what it does is it connects you to a local lawyer that handles everything from start to finish, so you don't have to go to court, you can keep your driving record clean, keep your insurance premiums low, and save money. And one of the coolest things is they actually offer you guys a money back guarantee if they aren't able to reduce points or keep the ticket fully off your record. If you register now and use my code, code AdamLZ, you'll save 10% off your first ticket. But be proactive, make sure you register now because you never know when you're gonna get a ticket and you're gonna wanna lock in this discount now. I'm super appreciative of Off The Record for sponsoring this video. I think you guys are really gonna like the service and I'm gonna have a link in the description if you wanna learn more. This is a teaser for what I'm gonna show you towards the end of this video. Look at this thing, dude. If you know, you know. But this is just one of the, one of the best parts for the 34 GTR. What I'm doing with it basically right now, um, we're doing another powder coat run tomorrow. So I have the stock knuckle with the stock hub and the brake dust shield. So I'm gonna slide this on and surprise, surprise, it hits the brake dust shield because it's obviously bigger. So now I know that I don't need to powder coat that. Um, and uh, I'll show you what I have that's gonna make life even easier. I've kind of been having an issue where pretty much anything and everything that I can find for this car that I can still get new, I've just been getting new. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know, man, I just, if I can put something nice, new, and shiny, it, my attitude's just been like, well, might as well. So we got brand new hubs, brand new knuckles. It's gonna look so much better. And then we don't have to worry about having old bearings and stuff. Yeah. Look at that, dude. The little things. <laughs> Yo, one thinks I'm crazy. Oh, dude. Yeah. I, I don't envy you at all for that. I'm looking for like Mark IV's rack and drive oh. stuff and I can't find it. It's like, I would like to buy that brand new. Just the little things like having brand yeah. new writing. Yeah, brand new. That's Dan at Terra Firma. Huh? <laughs> That's a shout out to Dan at Terra Firma. Oh my God. Look at that dude. Everything. Window oh switch. <laughs> I mean, I get it though, for sure. Yeah. It is like, might as well make the everything is, in the interior look new. Yeah. The thing is, like, the things that I do find for my car that are brand new, or like, you yeah. find for this car that are brand new, they're not crazy expensive where, like, people will not buy them. Yeah. I will buy even, you know, it, things like that are not that expensive. Yeah. No, I think even that, that was like maybe like 35 new. or 40 bucks. Right. But so. the thing is, if what happens to the Mark IV Supra happens to these cars, which kind of already is happening in Japan, some dude just goes and buys up. Everything. All the remaining inventory and triples the prices. Yeah. And then everyone gets screwed. So yeah. I'm kind of at an advantage building this car now versus people are gonna be building them four or five years down the road once there's like a monopoly on all the inventory for parts for these cars.
mic. So what we've done so far it was clean up a lot of the factory vacuum and coolant passages from the stock intake. Right. And delete them since we don't need them. It'll make it easier to work on the car. Let's say you guys are working on the car at Drift Week. It'll be a lot easier to work on it. Uh, it'll have a, the oil cooler without the factory coolant uh, passages for the oil cooler. So like this car has a factory oil cooler. Yeah. Uh, but we delete them less things to fail. Gotcha. So that won't fail. It will have an oil, aftermarket oil cooler. And then by doing that, you delete a lot of stuff that makes it so busy under there. Mm -hmm. It will be easier to like swap knock sensors or anything like that. So accessible, serviceable, and it looks a lot cleaner. Yeah, so, I always hate how much of a rat's nest it is under the intake manifolds. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, so then I took the harness from, this is a white car's engine, right. but I took the harness from the brown car and I'm keeping it to a chassis. So like okay. if there's any issues, I don't want it to be any issues down the road or when we put it back in and then we're in a crunch time, there's less things to go wrong. Right. Because, you know, we're so far planning to head the dyno on a specific day. If something goes wrong, that'll be one less thing to worry about. Cool. Because the harness that came out of the car is going back in the car. So yeah, so far I'm doing that. I take the oil pan out. Yeah, it looks much better. Yeah, resell it real quick. And then waiting for the next things for the timing components and all that. Nice. And I'll be it. Alright, so when we took the oil pan off, I wasn't counting for this to come out like the way it is. That's Hershey's um, chocolate syrup, bro. Huh? That's Hershey's chocolate syrup. That's not good. You've been melting chocolate syrup in your engines? It's weird because I, th I felt like this engine was like the healthiest one Jay I ever had. Like it ran the basket. It just was the peppiest. Well, it was the crustiest. Yeah. And I mean, but the, definitely didn't see many oil changes. Well, so. the, it helps seal the piston rings better when there's all the sludge. Oh, okay. More compression. Yep. Yep. But yeah. Oh my God. Dude, that's bad. You need to change the oil, people. Ugh. That's bad. I wonder if it's been like that or if that's just from, like, I feel like I've changed the oil in that car. It's been like this. Oh, my God. It's been like this. It's just to the point where it could have caused, any, like, some failure. Like, Homie got his engine from Charlie the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it's a good thing we're going through it huh yeah i was like man this is the the best cleanest 1j because it's such a clean car i was like we don't need to go through it the other one's like let me just let me just do a couple things but well, remember this engine didn't come on that car i know i know, oh, I know. Okay. but it had a nice valve cover so i was like oh it must be, nice. it it must be yeah. beautiful oh. in there I'll, tell you, I'll be the first one to tell you don't let the don't judge a book by its cover yeah there you go yeah and in, in case you're not super familiar with johan you worked at a jdm engine importer for how long four years Okay, and he's he's seen some things, all right. Yeah. So don't let the outside fool you. If you see a clean engine, don't let that fool you. Like, look inside if you can. This is why. Yeah. These oils from 2008. Yoan would go in. He would take the oil cap off, and he would spend a ton of time just cleaning where the oil cap is. So all the idiots come in. They unscrew <laughs> the oil cap. They're like, Oh, it looks great and clean in here. <laughs> Little do they know. I'm just the playing. Rest I'm just playing. Yeah, it's no. a good idea though, right? <laughs> yeah, it's we, great. We should go. Yeah, we should do that. Yeah, they used to do that in Japan. Really? Like, no lie. Really? Like, the Camry motors, Yeah. the two ACs, they look brand new and that's plot. But then the rest? The <laughs> rest look like this for an engine that's not even 10 years old. Wow. Yeah. So, we were changing the timing belt regardless, the timing belt, um, but I was just looking over the engine and I found that. So we weren't sure if it was changed prior or not, so we went ahead and still made the decision to change it. And then I just like doing a visual over everything and that's what I found. Crazy. Crazy, I didn't see it was in the car, but yeah. Change the timing belt. <laughs> Look at what we're taking today. Good old Evo is back in business and back in the picture. I love this thing so much. And it's actually very nice overcast day in Florida where it's not too bright or hot or sunny. So we're gonna go have some fun. Ready? Yeah.
second gear, but the good news is the Evo is happy. Oh, stop sign. Sorry about all your stuff in the back seat. Yeah, everything in this line for it. This thing's fun. Well, the squeegee brakes are back. Oh no, I'm so dark. They can't see me. Are you? I'm blinded. What's crazy is, it was such a dumb little problem that like messed this car up and took it out. I don't remember if we fully like went into detail to what happened. Um, so when we get to the warehouse, I'll show you guys. Uh, yeah, no, for whatever reason, the launch control wasn't really working there. So I just revved it up a bunch and slipped the clutch. Hmm. I hate this clutch anyway, so I don't feel bad slipping it. You just want to destroy it? Yeah, but I can't because it's a freaking 3,000 horsepower clutch. It makes it so hard to drive smooth. Back. It was not that bad. Well, we, getting them some heat in them? Yeah, but once you start to go fast, that's when we start oh, to squeak. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I was driving. So. Yeah, she was like, she doesn't use the brakes. No, I don't need them. So, I don't, like I said, I don't remember what was explained in videos and what wasn't, but there's basically this little thing here that uh, we noticed was broken in my car and had been broken for some time. And now we know that this is, uh, it's like acts as noise reduction in regard to the RPM signal. What that necessarily does, I still don't know for sure. But our theory is, it had been broken for a while, so I don't think it had to do with it being broken. But driving it, there's a very strong possibility that the wire is shorted on the block. Because it didn't happen until I made a pull. So it's like, it uh, had some sort of short and it fried the crank trigger. And what's annoying is on this motor, you have to take apart all the timing stuff, all the covers, all the pulleys, just to get to the crank sensor. So if you ever have any issues in regards to these little things, even though they look dumb, it could result in having to take apart half your motor. So uh, definitely be mindful of that. I stole one off the other car for now. And now this thing's good as new, thanks to Yolan. Take three, we've, we've been having a little bit of interference of redlining engines. Mike's been out in the parking lot with LS400. No, 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 it's not that, no, no. <laughs> so what we're about to do is something that I haven't documented in videos before. It's something that we did in my SR way back in the day, but I believe the machine shop actually helped us with it. So this right here in my hand is a degree wheel. And it's not something you really need to worry about when you have a stock engine with stock camshafts and uh, basically all your lines would match up on the cam wheels and on the crank wheel. And now that we've introduced a new variable, the BC264 cams, I'm actually putting a BC cam gear on here so we can check to make sure everything is in sync. There's no sort of variances due to tolerances or whatever um, that could result in, you know, maybe as much as a degree off whether it be advanced or retarded on the exhaust cam because the intake cam on the 1J is the VVTi one, so we can't really do anything with that. So this will tell us if we might want to make any adjustments on the dyno. A lot of people will just mess with the cam gear on the dyno because they uh, don't have the ability to fit a proper like degree wheel on the car while it's in the engine bay. So we're gonna do that now, figure out if it's right on the money, if it's a little bit off. So when we're on the dyno, Freddie's tuning it, we can make adjustments and see what that does for us. We ran into a minor speed bump. So when you do cams on these engines, it's very important to make sure you set valve lash and check it. Yohan has always said that this engine's been super noisy. So just for the heck of it, he took a feeler gauge and took some measurements. You wanna walk us through that? So for these BC cams on the exhaust size, it calls for 10 thousandths of an inch valve lash clearance. This is, or it's hard to see, but it's 10 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge. We put it in there. Too, too loose. Ideally, you just go up from there until you feel it is tight to where it's like somewhat loose, but not also driving onto the filler gauge. So I already checked it and you know, I went up to 11,000, still too loose. But the final number that I got that seems to be the one working is 14,000, 
it's kind of grabby, but it doesn't get stuck. Like it lets me slide it in. Just for the hell of it, we'll try 15 thousandths of an inch and that won't let me go in. So this bucket slash valve slash is off by four thousandths of an inch on that bucket. The rest we haven't measured yet. Um, I'm sure they'll be off, but judging by that one, they'll probably be off. We'll just have to measure each one and see how much they're off. But just that one along right there, it tells us it's off. And then everything else is gonna throw it off from there. So in addition to making the valve train more noisy, would that make it more likely that I could throw a bucket or? So you have more clearance, so yeah, that if the buck, you have valve float and the bucket, it, the shame is not secure to the bucket. There's nothing really physically holding the shame to the bucket other than the proper clearance from the cam to the shim. So if there's a lot of clearance between the two and you have valve flow, that's when the buckets, the shims tend to come off the bucket and then uh, destroy everything in there. And we don't want that. Yeah. So it's 4,000 off. The shims are pretty thick, but they all vary within size. Before we move on to anything else forward, like degree in the cam, that has to be done. Every time you do install aftermarket cams, you want to do that to make sure you're set and it's within spec. Uh, intake size 8,000 and a saw size 10,000 and 8,000 for intake. Um, each cam manufacturers have different uh, specs, but they all should be within the same range. So before we can do anything with the green, that's something we're going to have to address. But you guys won't see in this video and that'll probably resume into tomorrow. So that's kind of where we're at right now. I'd say it's a bummer, but we have time and you know, we want to do it right moving forward and not keep, for lack of a better word, half-assing stuff and yeah, causing issues. We got the tools. We somewhat are learning on the way we go. So if we could do it right and just get them all square away, then that will be the best. I guess the only other real exciting update I can give you guys, this FD right here, even though the plan isn't to keep the LS, I'm going to bring it over to the dyno when we tune the chaser with the new engine, which will be later this week. And uh, it'll be interesting to see what Freddy can do with it because I'm convinced it's running super rich right now So it might have another 50 wheel left in it. I'm curious also. I don't know much about LS's I know the LS3 should be somewhere in the 400s range But uh, I'm curious to see what it makes and what that curve looks like compared to all the turbo cars we're used to So you can look forward to that if you want to say that that's something you're looking forward to But other than that, just kind of a chill video I've been kind of stuck at the house a little bit more than normal just getting caught up on a lot of back-end stuff So I've been able to be in the shop as much as I want, but hopefully that'll change moving into later this week So appreciate you guys watching this video Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you soon.